Hello and welcome to our first school at home class in English grade 7. We are in the fourth quarter of our set of lessons and I hope that everybody will delight in learning lesson number 5. In today's lesson, you will learn about the following. Number 1. Define news literacy. Number 2. Determine the truthfulness and accuracy of the material viewed. We have learned that entertainment texts are very exciting pieces of writing to read because they are meant to entertain. A lot of times, they can be funny and humorous or just exciting in general. First of all, an entertainment text is meant to entertain. Just like it sounds, the purpose of an entertainment text is for the writer to entertain the reader. Before we start our lesson for today, I want you to determine whether the following statements are true or false. Write T if the statement is true and F if it is false. Write your answers in your notebook. You can pause this video for each item so you can think of your answers carefully. Are you ready? Let's do it! Number 1. If the post online is viral, it is considered true. Correct! The answer is false. Number 2. Don't trust stories that cite another news outlet as the source of information. Correct. The answer for number 2 is true. 3. Checking the validity of materials like news articles, videos is a must before believing or sharing it. If your answer for number 3 is true, then you're right. 4. You can trust anonymous sources. Brilliant! Number 4 is false. Last number, number 5. News literacy will help us determine the validity of sources. Good! The answer is true. How do you know if something you read or view is true? Why should you care? In this digital age, we are bombarded with lots of information, especially online, whether real or fake. That is why, as news consumers, we need to be smart in analyzing between news and just noise. What is news literacy? News literacy is a curriculum developed at Stony Brook University in New York over the past decade. It is designed to help students develop critical thinking skills in order to judge the reliability and credibility of information, whether it comes via print, television, or the internet. This is a particularly important skill in the digital age as everyone struggles to deal with information overload and the difficulty in determining the authenticity of reports. In other words, news literacy is the acquisition of 21st century skills for analyzing and judging the reliability of news and information, differentiating among facts, opinions, and assertions in the media we consume, create, and distribute. The digital age poses four information literacy challenges for civil society. Number one, the overwhelming amount of information that floods over us each day makes it difficult to sort out reliable from fabricated information. Number two, new technologies to create and widely share information make it possible to spread misinformation that looks like it's from an authoritative source. 3. The conflict between speed and accuracy has escalated. We all want information as quickly as possible. But accelerating the distribution of information in the digital era has also increased the chances that the information will be wrong. 4. The internet and social media make it much easier to select only the information that supports our pre-existing beliefs, reinforcing rather than challenging them. How can we determine the truthfulness and accuracy of the materials viewed? 
ask this three questions in analyzing the truthfulness and accuracy of the materials. Number one, who is the author? Before reacting and sharing any material, make sure to search information about the author like other articles he or she wrote and other articles published under his or her names. Usually, well-known authors have public information that can be verified. Be skeptical of the author who has no public information. If you can't find anything about the author, then he or she is not a real person. Nowadays, especially in our virtual world, anyone can host any material and pretend to be someone else. Anonymously, hosted websites are most often the creators of the fake news and rumors. But it is you, the social media user, who chooses to forward or delete the message. Scammers are the only people who benefit from fake viral posts. Fake news is everywhere. We need to take a closer look at the original article by clicking their original website and read more the About Us page. If you can see some technical issues, construction of sentences, and other problems, then it is a fake news. When this news was found out to be fake, it will be deleted and a message telling us sorry this page is not available will pop up. Even Google can tell you all about the authenticity of the publication or the article. You can also check Rappler, a social news network committed to investigative reporting, has documented at least 300 websites spreading fake news in the Philippines. One of their investigations monitored the growth of suspicious Facebook accounts that seeded fake news into campaign pages during the country's May 2016 elections. So, what makes a trustworthy news source? Machinery of care. Good news sources have significant processes and resources dedicated to promoting accuracy and correcting error. Transparency. Good news sources clearly mark opinion columns as opinion, disclose conflicts of interest, indicate stories where information was obtained and how it was verified, and provide links to sources. Expertise. Good news sources hire reporters with reporting or area expertise who have been educated in the processes of ethical journalism, where new writers with other expertise are brought in. They are educated by the organization. Agenda. The primary mission of a good news source is to inform its readers, not elect Democrats, promote tax cuts, or reform schools. Number three. Is this article credible? Credibility is the quality of being trusted or believed in. It is now easier to answer this final question since you have already answered two questions about the author and the publisher. Let's try this. Determine the truthfulness and accuracy of this news article. The prolonged use of medical masks when properly worn does not cause CO2 intoxication nor oxygen deficiency, World Health Organization, or WHO. The prolonged use of medical mask can be uncomfortable. However, it does not lead to CO2 intoxication nor oxygen deficiency. While wearing a medical mask, make sure it fits properly and that is not tight enough to allow you to breathe normally. Do not reuse a disposable mask and always change it as soon as it gets dumb. Medical masks, also known as surgical masks, are flat or pleated. They are affixed to the head with straps or have ear loops. Who is the author? The author was not mentioned specifically because they represent the whole organization but their website and all the information about the organization is verifiable. Where did this article come from? This article comes from the World Health Organization official website, who began when their constitution came into force on April 7, 1948, 
a date they now celebrate every year as World Health Day. They are now more than 7,000 people from more than 150 countries working in 150 country offices, in six regional offices, and at their headquarters in Geneva, which is headed by Director General Dr. Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus. Number three, is this article credible? Yes, this article is credible because their organization has been around for many years and 150 countries are included in their organization. They are trustworthy since it is filled with people with expertise in their fields and their information is verifiable. This post main agenda is to inform the public regarding health concerns. Let's proceed to our activity. Activity number one. Agree or disagree on the following statements based on the lesson discussed by putting happy emoji if you agree and sad emoji if you disagree. Number one. Evaluating the authenticity of the material is helpful in stopping the widespread of fake news. Correct. Number one is happy emoji. Number two, being literate in evaluating news and other materials has a great advantage for news consumers. Right, a smiley face. Number three, if the posts online are viral, share them. Correct, the answer is sad emoji. Number four, knowing the background of author and his credibility is one of the ways on how to determine fake news from real. Very good. The answer is happy emoji. And last number, number five, posts of actors, actresses, and other well-known people can be considered reliable. Nice! The answer is sad emoji. Very good, class. Determine if this news article is true and accurate using what you have learned from the lesson discussed. DepEd, public schools in over 300 districts have conducted dry runs for blended learning. Philstar.com, July 31, 2020, 10.52 a.m. Manila, Philippines. Education Secretary Leonor Briones on Friday said that public schools in 345 districts have conducted dry runs in preparation for the resumption of classes on August 24. We can definitely start on August 24 with our blended learning approach. For months now, we have been conducting dry runs and simulations in all districts using different approaches, Briones said in Filipino during a COVID-19 task force meeting with the president. These approaches include learning through radio, television, online platforms, and modules, Briones added. Although classes officially begin on August 24, Briones said the opening of the school year will be launched two weeks earlier on August 10. Bella Perez Rubio Who is the author? Where did this article come from? Is this article credible? Number 1. Bella Perez Rubio is a legit author of Philippine Star. She has also public information online that is verifiable. She has also published other articles under Philippine Star publication. 2. The news comes from the Philippine Star a credible publication that has been providing news for many years. 3. Yes, the information is credible based on the answers from question number 1 and number 2. Activity 3. Real or fake? Determine whether the given headlines below are real or fake news. Number 1. Parents prefer modular learning by Jan Vic Mateo six days ago. More parents prefer education through printed or digital modules instead of online-based and other distance learning. Source, Philippine Star. 
Right, number one is the real news. Number two, Cebu-based parish priest impregnates daughters of his associate pastor by Ronda Balita Online News, March 7, 2018. Correct, number two is a fake news. Number three, Queen Elizabeth, who would have thought that one day Philippines will get a brave man like Duterte. BBC Channel. Richard Gomez shared it on February 21 in his Twitter account. Very good! It is an example of fake news. Number 4. DepEd Nearly 22.7 million students enrolled for a coming school year by Neil Arwin Mercado reporter at namercadoinquirer.net 0612 p.m. August 6, 2020. Very good! It is a real news. And last number, number 5. Breaking news! Comedian Michael V, also known as Bitoy, died after contracting the coronavirus. Randomnames.club slash inquireupdates.ml Fantastic! It is a fake news. This time, I want you to write at least five sentences in answering the question below. Write it in your notebook. What will you do when you see news and other materials like videos, pictures, especially those online posts? You can pause this video for a while so you can think of your answers. This time, let us do the post test. Encircle the letter of the correct answers. Number one. Which of the following statements is not true? A. Actors, posts, and well-known people are reliable source of information. Letter B. If the author and publisher are credible, then the posts are considered real. C. News literacy is knowing how to evaluate the materials presented to us so we can identify if they are authentic or not. Letter A is the correct answer. Number 2. When you see a viral post online, it is best to A. React to it B. Read, analyze, and evaluate its authenticity C. Read, react, and share it to your Facebook friends Brilliant! B is the correct answer. 3. If the author of the material does not share public information, news consumer must be letter A, interested, B, skeptical, C, intrigued. The answer is letter B, correct. 4. Good news sources hire reporters with reporting or area expertise who have been educated in the processes of ethical journalism. This definition describes A. Machinery of care B. Transparency C. Expertise The answer is letter C, correct. And number 5, blank is a literacy that empowers news consumers to determine whether information is reliable and then act on it. A. Computer literacy B. Digital literacy C. News Literacy Great job! The answer is letter C. Goodbye class and see you again in the next lesson.